This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters first. This video is sponsored by Adjuster Pro. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout and get licensed right now at adjustertv.com slash licensing. First question I got here is, um, and I get this question quite a lot, and that is when, uh, and then once you've figured out when, how should you quit your day job if you are contemplating becoming an independent property claims adjuster who does, whether you do field claims or you do remote claims or desk claims or whatever. The short answer is that because the, the nature of this particular business is, um, even at the best of times is quote unquote feast or famine, meaning, meaning that you're either working or you're not working and you don't know when the work is gonna come. The more experience you have and the longer you do this, the more you can kind of predict that because you start to build relationships and you start to um, see what the storm season looks like, right? If you do storm claims. Um, but as a new person coming into this, because your opportunities are a little bit more, more limited to only storm situations and really major catastrophes like hurricanes, for the most part, there's always, of course, exceptions, certainly. Um, it's a little bit less uh, certain to say, all right, well, I'm gonna quit my job on July 16th, and then I'll be working within two weeks of that as a claims adjuster. It just doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, in a way, and I guess fortunately in, in another way. Unfortunately, obviously, because it makes it really hard to, to make plans, and if you have a family or you have a lot of financial uh, obligations and responsibilities that you can't like have a dip in your income, then that's a problem, right? And fortunately, because then it, it, I think that it really helps to help people who really are all in on this um, take the leap, right? And it, I think it's, you, kinda, you can't really sit on the fence with it. You either have to be all in or you have to be all out, right? So we talk about quitting your current job, like your day job, your, the thing that you're doing now to, to generate income, um, you know, you have to you have to look at your job, whatever you're doing, as having a lot of value because it's bringing in money that's then paying for your financial obligations. Right. The second you stop doing that, then then you're floating on whatever savings you have, and then those those aren't going to last forever. And then there's a, there's a gap between getting work as an adjuster and then quitting your day job. So I think that the, the really the best advice I could give, as far as like uh, when to quit your day job is to say, all right, well, first of all, you've decided that you're all in. I'm, I'm going to be an adjuster. I've talked to enough people. I've networked with enough companies. I've watched enough adjuster TV videos, right? And I'm deciding that this is a real thing. I, if I, I know that if I, um, there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not an tra oncoming train, um, that if I just persevere and really stick it out and really put my shoulder into this, that I will be successful, right? And you really kind of have to have that attitude because the best adjusters, and really the people who stay adjusting are the ones that really put their shoulder into this. They know it's real and they, they're in it, right? So they're all in. You're licensed, right? So you've got it at the minimum home state license or de designated home state license. Um, I would say to get as many licenses as you can. This time of year, you know, during the summer or storm season, probably, you know, pushing into like the peak of hurricane season, you really wanna kind of focus on everything from Texas to North Carolina, and then picking up like Minnesota, um, Oklahoma, um, you know, and some places in the Midwest. Certainly you wanna try to pick up the New York license, but you wanna get as many licenses as possible, right? So you got, you're all in, right? really the first step, got a bunch of licenses um, at the absolute bare minimum one, and I have lots of videos on licensing and why they're super duper important, right? And you are have some foundational uh, Xactimate training, right? So, you, so you, under, you, you know how to use the software to write estimates, right? I think these are the, the really the three um, keys that you'd need to have in order to be able to just have the absolute baseline of knowledge uh, and skill in your in your brain, right? Um, the software is really, really important. Even if you only get like a level one Xactimate user certification, that training alone will teach you quite a bit. Believe it or not, level one is not, is not like a super duper beginner, like, you know, two hour course or whatever. It's like a two day, it's, it covers 
you'll you'll know how to use Xactimate really well after after even only having a level one certification. Level two is even better. It's a lot more complex. It dives deeper into the tools. Um, it introduces new advanced tools to you as a level two certified adjuster. But level one will get you there. If all you have. Uh, available to you or all you have in hand is a level two certification and a big storm hits, I think you'd be good to go. I don't think you're going to have any problems. Um, right. And then I would say you need to have uh, some additional like adjuster specific property adjuster specific training, which is going to cover, you know, how to use Xactimate in the context of a claim, some policy considerations, you know, how to read a policy, how to understand like what's the difference between being a, a, an insurance adjuster versus like a construction estimator, which are they're kind of two different things. Um, and then understanding, like, again, some construction stuff, but also uh, really the, the claims process from the perspective of the insurance adjuster, the, ca- the insurance adjusting side, the carrier side of things, right? So in other words, you're learning um, why insurance companies do what they d- things the way they do, why the policy is the core of that, the claims process, um, what it's like to be on a storm, how to prepare yourself for being on a storm or a storm, you know, claims deployment, um, understanding, estimating guidelines, how things are, you know, it's just different. And you, and there's a lot more to know than just like, well, I got a license and I got exactly at level one, one or two, I'm good to go. You have to have really kind of a, a well-rounded understanding of, of the overall claims process and how you fit in as the adjuster, right? So get those three things and then, and then think about quitting your day job. And that could be, you could have done that in January, you could be doing that right now, right? As far as like how to quit your day job, because of what I mentioned in the very beginning of this, where you're sent, where I said basically the storm season happens between March and October every year, but the storms can happen anytime during that time and it can be really, really active or really, really inactive or somewhere, somewhere in between, right? Um, it, I don't think that it makes sense. I, I personally, I like to have a safety net, right? Because if you start running out of running out of uh, like road at the end of the storm, so you're pushing up against the end of the storm season, and you're just now finishing up getting your licenses and your trainings and your Xactimate certifications and all that stuff, um, then the chances of you having a storm deployment tend to drop off, right? So you have less and less opportunities. If you quit your you quit your day job, you just put your two weeks in or whatever, and you just say I'm going to go be an adjuster now, and you don't have a plan for what to do after that if there's no work until next March, right? That's a that's a big gap, that's the whole winter, then you're gonna be in trouble, right? So personally, I like to have a safety net where I would say, all right, forget about the storm season and all that stuff. I discovered this career when I discovered it, right? Just whenever it was. And I'm hypothetically speaking as though I'm you. And I will say, okay, I wanna get uh, decided if I'm all in on this, maybe I'll do a ride along with somebody just to kind of job shadow for a day or two or three, um, get licensed, get training, get Xactimate user certifications, um, network, all that stuff. You know, maybe I'll take some time off. I'm still I'm still working at my regular job, right? Maybe I'll use some of my PTO or some sick days or whatever, and I'll go to Dallas for this training or that training at the at the IA firms, right? And those are those are kind of re recruiting slash networking events where you do learn some stuff, but it's mainly recruiting and networking, right? I'm gonna do all that stuff. And then when I get all that kind of in hand, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm ready to go. Meanwhile, I'm gonna be researching what I can do to generate money, um, doing something that is a work that's easy to get and that's also easy to quit, right? So I'm gonna be kind of looking around and saying, all right, well, I make this much money, I need to make this much money in order to be able to pay for this training and these licenses and pay my bills and feed my kids and feed my you know dog and whatever right pay pay my mortgage um what else can i do that will fill that in that i can just quit like it's on an app right so it's like uber or something like that what can i do and you might live in a place where you can crush it as an uber driver or do an uber eats or whatever but you might live in some place where you know like around here i don't think uber drivers Make very much. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think they make very much. When I try to get an Uber in Whitefish, Montana, it's like it's going to be 45 minutes before somebody picks me up, and it's really expensive. And so it's like, why, why bother? Um, and this is not a very big area, right? Um, so you need to. So I'm going to be doing some research. Maybe it's maybe I was in college or when I was just after I got out of high school, I did restaurants, right, or retail or something like that. Maybe I don't mind taking a step backwards and saying, all right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do those things. If 
you know, the hours are better for doing additional trainings and things like that. And they're pretty, there's a high turnover in those jobs. Not that I want to like, um, you know, get hired someplace and then turn around five minutes later and quit. But at the same time, it's easier to quit those jobs and they have, they have a lot of people coming and going out of that, that kind of work. So it's a little bit more expected. Whereas if I'm like, I work in a machine shop as a part of a team and I've been there for, for 12 years already, or I'm a police officer, or I'm a nurse, or I'm a, you know, I, I have an Ed, work in an Edward Jones office or something like that, where it took a long time to get into it, right? And to kind of establish where I was, I can't say like, you know, hurricane whatever is gonna hit tomorrow and I'm just gonna walk into my boss's office and just quit with no notice at all, which is what would happen, right? If, if you wait until the very last second. So all this to say, maybe I will get those licenses, do all this stuff while I've still got that good, strong, steady income coming in. And maybe at the end of this, maybe if this is like October, I'm just gonna stay in my, my day job until next spring. I'll just wait and just, and just stick it out over the winter, keep picking up licenses, keep going to networking events and all that kind of stuff. And then in the spring, I'll, I'll put in my two weeks notice or maybe a four weeks notice, right? If I really, really, you know, if I really have a great relationship with my current employer and I want to help them out and help them find somebody else to fill, to fill my position, right? I'm going to, you, you can put out how, whatever kind of notice in you want. You put in three months notice if you want to, um, but put in something that's reasonable, obviously that makes sense. And so you're not burning the bridge, right? Because just in case you get out on that first storm, right? And maybe the first storm doesn't, you do this in March and the first storm doesn't happen until September or whatever. And you get out there and you absolutely crash and burn and you hate it. And it can happen. This is not for everybody, right? Then you have, it may be more challenging to get back into that, that role that you were in previously, that the, the really good day job that you left to come to do this. But you didn't fully burn the bridge by giving them one minute notice, walking into the office and saying, well, I got to go. Bye. I'm going to go do this insurance thing. What? What the hell are you talking about, right? Again, we're looking for people that... You know, are looking to serve this industry, and you'll serve your your current employer, your form, your soon to be former employer, by giving them a soft landing when you leave, right, and helping them put somebody back in there. Um, and then, you know, maybe you do this in March, right? And I, I'm going to jump immediately into work that's easy to get and easy to quit, right? Maybe I'm doing Uber, driving people around back and forth the airport, and just you know, that that's enough. That that works. I can turn it off and on with the app on the phone, and if I do get called on a storm six weeks into that, I just don't turn the app back on and nobody cares, right? Which is what's really, really great about the ride share and sort of the gig economy stuff. Or maybe it's doing retail at the mall, right? Or maybe it's your waiting tables or tending bar. Maybe you get on a construction crew or something like that. Doesn't matter, right? Easy to get, easy to quit. Um, I'm, per again, I'm personally going to prefer things that where I'm not really going to be putting somebody in a lurch if I quit, even if it does have high turnover. So like the app-based stuff works for me. Um, there did work for me when I, you know, when I switched from being a claims adjuster and I saw the potential of adjuster TV, I quit doing claims and immediately started doing like Uber Eats and like rideshare stuff. And that kept the lights on for us until Adjuster TV started to generate revenue that, you know, then we could pay our bills with, right? Um, so I was willing to take a, a big, big step backwards from being an insurance adjuster, which making a lot more money than I was at Uber Eats, because I knew that I'm taking three steps back to take 10 steps forward, right? So that's kind of the attitude I think a person needs to have as far as uh, how you, quit your day job and when to, when to quit your day job um, so that the transition is smooth and you're not you're not putting yourself or your family or those that are counting on you to, to generate money or revenue or income putting them at risk right so you have to be smart about this so long story short um, wait until you've got you've gotten all your training everything in hand and that you're able to pay for it you might even like spend a few extra weeks or months uh, or a year or two, right? Saving up money so that you can, you know, maybe you don't want to work at all, or maybe you want to have like pay for the absolute best training that there is and get all the best gear and get a new vehicle and all this kind of stuff. And you're going to have to save up for that, right? It's gonna, it, might, it might take time. I would think of this less in terms of like, I'm desperate for uh, a new career. I'm just going to like jump right now. And maybe there's water in the pool, maybe there isn't. I'm going head first um, to 
being a little bit more intentional about it, being more thoughtful about it, because I think that you'll be rewarded for having some patience and delaying gratification, right? And having the attitude that you're, you're going to come into this industry to serve it, but you're gonna to try to serve the industry that you're leaving, um, as well as, um, hey, let's be smart about this. Let's not um, go off half cocked, because you will, it, it's, you, you the more the, the more you can reduce your risk in this endeavor, or really any endeavor, by just being smart about it and just being a little bit more patient, I think the better off you're gonna be. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.